Okay. Uh, how did you begin in radio? On a fluke, I was um, attending a, a, a bridal function with my mother, and uh, they, this guy was standing on the stage, and he seemed like he was just lost on the stage. And I was getting ready to get married, and I said, he, you know, he just didn't know what to say to these 5,000 women who just wanted him to sit down and bring on some bride <laughs> dresses. And so he said, I, I, what do I do? I talk to a microphone. What, what do I do? I said, you sit down and you give me the microphone and you just be quiet and let me handle it. And so he did that. And uh, then after that, you know, I got up and we just started talking. We had a conversation, you know, with the ladies. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I want to put you on the radio. I'm like, Yes, baby. When the medication wears off, you right. fall in love everywhere. And uh, so he asked me to come back to the function the next day. Mm -hmm. He said, can you do that again? I said, not on a bed, but if you feed me, I maybe could come up with something. Mm -hmm. And so he had me to come back, and I came back that Sunday, and they put me on the radio in my hometown. And oh, where was that at? In Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, what were you doing prior to driving being a school bus? <laughs> you're so you're driving a school bus Mind one day. Minding my own business, wasn't bothering nobody, doing my wife and my mommy. And mm -hmm. it, they take me off and they said, we'll pay you real money and you can buy it. I said, right, and I can go buy soap, deodorant, toilet paper, toothpaste, and stuff like that. <laughs> and they said, yes. So I did a most irresponsible thing. You know how people hit the lottery and they say, I'll never quit my job. Right. I walked off in the middle of the day. I know it was irresponsible. I came back and went. There weren't any kids day. in the bus. But no, but I mean, I had dropped the kids off. But I came, I came, what I did was, what I did do was, uh, I left the kids. I didn't leave them in school. I went and picked the kids up from school. And then I quit. <laughs> and um, I did morning and afternoon driving around. Uh, what, was it a music station? It was a was music it? station, a rock and roll station, and uh, there, our sister station was a talk radio station. Mm -hmm. And um, I came on with the morning guy and the afternoon guy. And in the morning, I was mother love, and I gave love advice. And in the afternoons, I did the weather and the sports. A la mother love style. Well, of course. Yeah. Um, you last year sometime? Last year in July. How did you get your job here? The guy who owned the radio station in Cleveland is my boss here. Oh, really? And he called me, and uh, he said, I want you to come to L.A. And I'm like, yeah, right, George. Come on, you baby, wake up. Come on, snap <laughs> out of it. And um, he said, no. He called me on a Wednesday. He said, can you come out on Friday? It just so happened. I was on the road. Mm -hmm. I just stand up. And I was on the road. And a club, I always tried to, I worked the Midwest, and when I could be close to home, I would come home or come in and out of town to see, make sure everything was okay. And I happened to come into town. I called my mother to see how everything was going, because she would keep my son while we were on the road. And I, would, I called home, and she said, well, you, need to, you might as well come home, because the club that you were going to work in for the weekend, well, it burned down. <laughs> so the club burned down, so I went home, and I came in, I'm dragging, and I'm tired. I drop my luggage, I sit down, and she says, George called. I said, George, who? She said, George from Los Angeles. I'm like, yeah, right, Ma, come on with it. And he called, and he flew me out on a Friday. He called me on a Wednesday, flew me out on a Friday. Put me on the air on a Sunday. I was back a month later, and I think. How was the reaction to to a mother love coming on the air? Something no one's ever really had before. You know, radio. I gotta tell you, Christopher, it was it has been truly amazing at how people have just responded and taken me into their homes. You know, because they know I'm just their girlfriend. You know, I'm you know I I'm, I'm harmless. You know, don't fool with me on a bad day. You know, but I you know I I I it's. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, it's like, how do you explain why you love somebody? You know? And, and I mean, if I could put it in technical terms, I couldn't explain it to you. I, I really couldn't explain it to you. I mean, they have really made me feel at home here. I can see why all the mail I'm, I'm telling these my radio babies. <laughs> these are my radio babies. I love them. And I answer all of my mail. And I mean, every time I think about it, just with these people don't know me. You, know, I mean, well, they kind of sort of like know me. You know, and now they'll get to see, you know, put a face to me, and everything. But I mean, and. I, and they do know me. They really do know me. Be I mean, they, they really just, do. It's I mean, because I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I, you know, I, 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 I just, I just can't. It's just so. It takes too much to be phony, and then you got to be lying, and I can't keep up with <laughs> mm -hmm. all that. And I be done forgotten. You know, just really mess myself up. You know, so I figured they can take the time to sit down and write me a letter.
I've, I've noticed that you don't have any guests on your show. It's just one on one. This is our radio babies. We don't. I mean, this is this is our radio program. You know, this is the radio program for them. You know, I mean, everybody and their mother got a radio program where they have guests and they sit down and they talk about politics and they talk about you know the economics and they talk about. We know all that. We live in that every single day. I don't need to. I don't need nobody else to drill into my head about the stupidity of Saddam Hussein or what is going on in Israel or what is going on with the AIDS crisis. We know this. Mm -hmm. We live this. I mean, we are losing people every single day to these different crises that are affecting us. Okay, so my thing is, okay, well, let's talk about how we can get through this stuff. You know, and sometimes, you know, I, sometimes it, it, it's, you know, it's not as deep as people think it, it should be, but I don't care what they think because it's our radio program and I don't think, I'm not thinking about them. But I just want them to know, you know, how sometimes you get those days where it seems like, God, there's nobody to talk to. If I could just have, you know, five minutes with somebody who would just listen to what, what was the I funniest to topic that you've ever had? Uh, and I'm sure oh, there's, there's a lot of them, too. Oh, yeah. God, but if you could a, single point out, well, I, I just you one topic, what? you would listen and just say, God, I can't believe I, you know. I, I, I mean, there, there are so many. I mean, we did a, we had a hysterical time talking about food one day. Um, this guy called up, he was talking about, we were talking about noisy men. And <laughs> oh, he just, he and what caught up and red, you know, just men like to make noise and rattle and just make noise right. with and this guy called up and he had me on the, literally I was rolling on the mother love don't you dare sit up and talk about no noisy man let me tell you about you and your noisy girlfriends I'm married to one of your noisy loud girlfriends oh and he must have went off for about fi oh I was on the floor it was hysterical it was hysterical you got the hair dryer going you got the washer going you got the microwave going you got the kids going you got this going the answer machine is going you got that TV up on 15 different stations and you're flipping it Channel. Don't you tell me about noisy women. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was great though. And um, the biggest lie you ever told to get out of sex. I re oh, um, I remember that. That that was uh, truly a question. To die laughing, the lighter side of the <sighs> We were talking about suicide one day. Get the measure. I remember. That. And uh, David Rappaport had killed himself up in the Maha up on Maha I remember that. And I was just so angry and so frustrated. You leave it off your show with that that day. And I, we were talking about this. And I had one of my radio babies call me up. She's 15 years old. And she said, how dare you tell me it's not right for me to take my own life when nobody values my life. I don't even value my life. And there's no reason for me to be alive. And that just tripped me out. This is a baby. She's 15, 15 years old. She's got a whole life. Of, and I remember being 15. And I remember feeling the same way she felt. I remember sitting in my mother's bathtub, you know, thinking to myself, I could just end this all right now and it would be so easy. And then I said, Nah, I'm gonna stick around and raise as much hell as I possibly can. <laughs> they are not getting off that easy. You know, and it's not that, you know, that the thought didn't go through my head, but it was a passing thought. And here is somebody who means this. And I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't let her go. I couldn't, I could not. Remember you had her on the phone for an awful For a long time. Boy, I got reamed with that one. But let me tell you something. They could have fired me for that. And if I had to do it again, I would have did it all over again. Her name is George. Her George, my radio baby. Yeah, and have you ever, ever spoke with her since? After that, she would call me periodically to let me know that she was doing okay. School was getting better. She was feeling better about herself. I haven't heard from her lately, and I would like to hear from her. So I hope that she... What I hope do you think about women in radio in general? Uh, is it harder for a woman nowadays it is, it is to... It is still, contrary to popular belief, it is still harder for women to come into 
a very male dominated field when you think talk radio you think male you think older male mm -hmm. you don't think Michael somebody Jackson, right maybe. you don't think somebody as flamboyant and as gregarious as myself who will laugh out loud on the radio and, and say silly things and you know be very precocious I mean that's for children you know and part of my radio program is allowing people to be you know it's it's not allowing people it's it's a place where people can come and be themselves and be real and be live and they don't have to put on that phony facade this is where you know mother loves house is where you come and you don't have to have your game face on you can have on your ugliest face you can have on your pretty face as, 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 long, as long as you you know you got on an honest face and you come to us we are family and you are at home, and you don't have to worry about all of that. I mean, I don't care. I mean, what amazes me is the, the scope of people who call. I mean, we have heads of corporations to homeless people calling this program. You and we, and Right, and, we, and, and, and it's like, this is the place where everybody can come, you know. And I mean, I get a lot out of it myself. I mean, and I get pumped up and, and excited, and people say, how can you be, how can you be so up at 10 o'clock at night? My God, I'm trying to go to sleep. You got that con laughing? What is wrong with you, woman? What is there, you insane? And, you know, I mean, I can sit there, and I know, I mean, I can, I mean, if I could, I mean, I just kind of feel like, you know, I can just, you know, it's like having an out-of-body experience almost. And I, I try to feel myself sitting in that person's house or sitting in their car with them or sitting in their driveway or sitting in the garage or sitting on the edge of the bed. You know, some of them I even sit in the bathroom with and I know when they're sitting on the toilet talking to me too. You know, and it's just scary. What are we going to do? Are ghosts really alien? Is who really alien? Ghosts. Don't talk. Good evening, Los Angeles and Southern California. I am Mother Love. In this, this is a sick place to work, I'm telling you. And this is KFI AM 640. We are more stimulating. Talk radio. I'm so glad you stopped by to see how your girlfriend in the air chair is doing on tonight. Well, I have to say that I'm in a very sympathetic mood and I'm feeling really very sorry, rather despondent and a bit dismayed because I have, I, I just don't know what my friends are going to do. I mean, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to survive. I, I, the government is just driving them crazy, and 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 they're just they're just not going to have money to to pay the pay the mortgage on their Bel Air homes, and they're not going to have the money to buy their caviar and go and buy these necklaces that are the new necklaces that are coming into the the, the beautiful jewelry stores, and I just don't. Oh please, I am. Did you see in the Times today? You know the that the, they're talking about up on Capitol Hill about doing uh, the budget over some kind of way they want to tax the rich people and put them in a different tax bracket and instead of them paying 28 percent and is that enough to just knock you over the rich people people making more than a million dollars and these people have the nerve to be sitting up whining and crying like a bunch of little wusses because they won't be able to drive in their Rolls Royces. And some people, in the article, some people didn't even want to be identified. One woman didn't want to be identified for, for fear of losing clients. And we should sit up. And, and they actually had this on the front page of the Metro section of today's LA Times. When uh, talking about how the rich are going to be taxed put into a higher tax bracket and what a strain it is going to put on their lifestyle. I mean, come on with it. Could somebody please talk to me about this one? I mean, now we got to start feeling sorry for people who make more than a million dollars a year because if they go into a higher tax bracket, then they won't be able to afford those horses and they just can't go to us. And, and, oh, they can't go to the south of France and sit on the Champs Elysees. I know what it's called. And then they just, they just, oh, they can't go on a cruise. And we're supposed to sit up and feel sorry for them. First of all, I'm rather tick miffed and, and perturbed 
that they only have to pay 28% in taxes. Now, I know that when they take these big, giant, king-size chuck out of my check, I know it's more than 28%. It looked like, like 58%, if you ask me. And I'm like, okay, well, where am I at? Where's the part that I get? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm living and struggling and scuffling just like everybody else is. But we're supposed to sit and feel sorry for the rich because people who make... Now, in my book, in my book, excuse me, maybe I'm having a stupid attack here, but in my book, anybody who makes like more than a million dollars is like a millionaire, right? And millionaires are considered rich people. I mean, I understand that the value of the dollar has gone down, but aren't they still rich people? And there was one guy in there, he says, well, he's got a six-figure portfolio, but he's not rich, man. I mean, excuse me, but how many of you who are out there, how many of my radio babies can pick up the phone and tell me unequivocally that if they made a six-figure income that they wouldn't be busy trying to get, you know, uh, 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 a better lifestyle? I mean, and that wouldn't be considered, you know, well-to-do to you. I mean, a six-figure portfolio. I mean, and six figures can go anywhere from 100000 to 999000 Hey, and I'd give them a buck to send them over the edge so that they could be in this in this millionaire tax bracket. But if the new tax laws are passed, I mean, the rich just are not good. Hey, maybe now they'll feel like we've been feeling. Maybe now they'll understand the pinch that we have been in when you have to figure out which bill you're going to pay for this month. When you got to put the bills in the hat and toss them up and try to pull them, just pull them out until the money is gone. And all those that don't get paid, hey, you hope that they don't cut the utilities off or, you know, something doesn't happen. Uh, uh before the next pay comes. You hope nothing catastrophic happens because anything catastrophic will completely wipe you out. If it's if, if if you get sick or a kid gets sick or the house catches on fire or, or the car breaks down or anything, any little thing can jump off and just put us back completely. I mean we don't have uh cocktail pieces and we don't have we don't have Rolex watches that we can go and take into the into the to the loan person and, 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 and get money against it. We don't have property that we can put up because you know like I, like many of you I am doomed to be a renter. So I don't have any property to pull up. My car isn't paid for. I don't have some luxurious Rolls Royce I could just roll into the dealer and say, buy this back from me, Chumley, and just give me the cash because I, I had never, I mean, I knew this, but I didn't know that this was, you know, something new. People are, some people are, are poor. And see, now there are different degrees of poor, being poor now. Now there's, there's poor, and then there's below the poverty line, and then there's, there's credit poor, and then there's cash poor. Okay, so I guess if you're credit poor, cash poor, below poverty, I mean, you're just out there in deep third someplace, you know, you don't know what's going on. And then these people, and we're supposed to sit and feel sorry for the rich. I should have problems like that. I should be concerned. I mean, I, I just found it rather, rather ironic that they would have such a, I mean, you know, we want to know what's going on in the world, but I just think it's a bit much. I mean, I, I mean, and I'm a sympathetic person. Don't get me wrong. I'm a sympathetic person. And Lord knows, Lord knows I would like to be having the problem that these people are having. But I don't. I am here in the real world. I have to deal with it on a regular, everyday basis, just like everybody else does. And I can't get it. I don't see what the heck they're whining about. What is the deal? Now, maybe you are, you are the most intelligent listening audience in all of Southern California, all of America. Maybe you can explain the mother love and some of, some of the other people I'd like to know. People, would you, I mean, could you actually feel sorry for the rich? How do you feel about this? And then, how do you feel about them only, see, only having to pay, you know, they jumping up and down and quibbling about, the, oh, they pay 28% in taxes and now it's going to go up to 31%, you know. <laughs> you think that it ought to be maybe a little more because they can write up, 
Well, I don't know. I, 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 I would think that they can write a lot of things off that we can't write off. They can write off corporations and businesses and luncheons and dinners. Wouldn't you like to just write off your grocery bill? I mean, if you could just write off all the little grocery t tickets and stuff that you get. I mean, I'd like to take all them little green receipts and just add them up and take them into the IRS and say, look, baby, look, write this off. They'd be giving me two, three checks. If you, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'd like to talk to you about this. Should we be, should we be, uh, do you think that this is a, that this is a necessary, ta I mean, that the tax increase for the rich is fair? Because I don't think that they pay their fair share, you know, for the most part, but then I don't think corporations pay their fair share. I think that the, you know, the bulk of the tax burden is always thrust up on the little person's back, the person who get out there and go to work every day, 8, 10, 12 hours. And not to say the rich people don't go out there and work 8, 10, 12 hours, because a lot of them, that's how they got their money. You know, they had to go out there and bust their butt to, to get the money that they're making. But, I mean, to, to tax people who are making if, if you're taxing people who are making $5, almost 50%, or you tax, you're not taxing people who are making $25, their fair share, I mean, I think there needs to be a balance someplace. Maybe the rich are finally, we're finally starting to see that there's going to be a balance. Do you think it's going to be a balance if the increase goes up to 31% for people who make more than a million dollars? And see, I don't think it's fair to just completely tax them out of the market because, um, you know, they're making money and they're more prosperous than that you know than some people you know because that's the great american dream you know you work hard you get prosperous you get rich you die with all the toys hey you win the game i understand how that goes but i don't think that it's fair for us to bear the burden for their prosperity either do you feel sympathetic toward the rich how do you feel about this tax increase toward those who make better than a million dollars and if you make better than a million dollars i'd like to and i know that you listen to this program just like people who don't make anywhere remotely close to a million dollars let us all talk about it so we can better understand one another you know maybe we just are not getting it I'd like to talk to some millionaires and some thousandaires and some two dollar heirs. The phone lines are open at 5201 KFI from Los Angeles and the Valley, 1 800 553 4640 from Orange County and across Southern California. We're going to discuss this rich people's tax and the main tax. And I find out, I'd like to know from you are you sympathetic toward the rich or are you sad? Wow. Um, we'll be back to take your calls and comments when we come from Ken Gallagher in the KFI Traffic Center. Okay. I just, I just, you're such a rebellious type you are, and I just, and I just sit here, and they come in and out with the doors, like you're talking, and you cut a pooter in this chair, you know. <laughs> Okay, this so is what we'll talk this about. Then we'll talk about it. Look at parents and their children. Are they responsible for the sins of their children? And then we'll discuss the most embarrassing moment you have with your brothers and sisters. You got brothers and sisters? Aren't they disgusting at times? Oh, my <laughs> God. I always said to my mother, why didn't you just tell him no? I mean, how come you could have just said, well, baby, I don't feel like it tonight? And did every time you said yes, you had to be in a baby-making mood? Jesus. I have five other brothers and sisters. And I came from a large family, I remember that. Okay, let's see what it says. Single parent, government takes all of our money, doesn't seem to like X worth money pay. What? Impossible to raise their taxes, they'll just raise their rates. Like to increase in taxes on the rich middle class suffers. Defends the rich, opposed to anyone being taxed more. Government has too much money now, right? And we ain't getting none of it. So you decide who goes on? No, she decides who goes on. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you have any order in which you take the calls, or is that I, up to I you? I take them just like she puts them up here. I take, I go, I'll go one, five, three, four, however she puts them up. Like the second call has been blinking longer. This means that it, they, they've been waiting the longest. But it's her... Oh. I'm sorry. We are back. I am Mother Love, and this is KFI AM 640. We are more stimulating talk radio. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, blow, baby. This is the weather from Southern California, IA, and KFI. 
Clear skies tonight, with overnight lows down to the upper 40s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and very warm, with Wednesday's highs ranging from the mid-70s at the beaches to the upper 80s for the L.A. Basin and into the mid-90s in the valleys. It will be slightly cooler on Thursday, with some morning overcast on the coast. Presently, in Athens, in Eagle Rock, and Donnie, and all my babies over there in Gardena, it is clear in your area and 70 degrees. And to all of my babies in Los Alamitos and Seal Beach, it is clear and 70 degrees over in your area in Santa Ana and Buena Park and Westminster and Orange and Fullerton and Anaheim and Yorba Linda and Linwood. You know what you're doing over there. You're having a real groovy time because it is clear and 68 degrees. Look up and gaze into the stars while you listen to your girlfriend in the air chair as we discuss the rich in America. I'm not one of them. I'm not close to being one of them. And they want to tax the rich a few more percent. I mean, you know, for people who make more than a million dollars. What do you think about this? Let's go to San Marcos and talk to Cookie, who's a first-time caller. Hi, Cookie. Welcome to KFI. Get out of here! What Cookie, it is your turn, girlfriend. Tell me what you think. This is your first time calling, so and you get to start the show off. So say hello to all of your radio family out there. So no oh, what girlfriend? See how easy all you can do is pick up the phone and dial the digits and holla at me, darling. Oh, I'm t no wonder you take it so girl, say, girlfriend, you gotta come up in the nineties and get you one of these push button jobs with the speed calling and the redial button and everything. So now see so, so you're not rich enough. You don't make a million dollars. You can't afford one of these phones. How much more do you think that this 31, this the up from 28 percent to this 31 percent increase? Do you think this is fair to the rich, to those who make more than a million dollars? Then do you think that that would 10% for everybody? Then that means that the rich would be even richer than they are, even though the poor would be more make have more money because they would have more of their income to to be disposed of that they could dispose of as opposed to the government disposing of it. Yeah, but you know, with 10 like 10%, mm -hmm. if you made a hundred dollars, you 10% of that. If you made a million, 10% of that. Mm -hmm. Well, see, there, there goes the word right there. It would be easier. And I think if we start talking about easy politics and government and America, these people would fall over dead. Because I personally, I think they've overcomplicated everything. And, and, and they're sticking everybody. And if they knew how to spend money, if they knew how to a toilet seat that they're gonna wet up in the first place. You know, I'm, I hear you, Cookie. I am glad that you called. It was wonderful to talk to you. Let's go to Granada Hills and talk to Jose, who's a first-time caller. Hi, Jose. Welcome to KFI. Like a 
we do, you know, if they get taxed anymore. I mean, how much more of this can we take? You know, I mean, I, I, I got my bank statement today. I kid you not, it was like at least fifteen, sixteen dollars worth of little charges just in there where you went to this place and you know a charge for this and a charge, just little hidden things. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's take it. So, they, so we just need to back off of them and. <laughs> But don't, but don't tax people who would have control over our livelihood can really ruin our life. I hear you, Jose. I hear you. You are great. I'm glad you caught. I know exactly where you're coming from. Let's go to West L.A. and talk to Jerry. Hi, Jerry. You're on camp out with Mother Love. <laughs> now you heard Jose. Jose passionately said, if we tax these people like crazy, like like they, like we're being taxed, it's just going to raise all of our rates. Mm -hmm. Because they got the money, see, they got the power, they got the power to keep us in our place, and, 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 and we can just... But see, they work now. They now, now, Jerry. Now, a lot of these rich people, they had to work really hard to get really rich, you know, to to do what they are doing. But I, do you think you do you 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 don't think that they're being taxed fairly? More than the thirty, more than the thirty-one percent, fifty-two percent. Now, come on, Jerry. Don't you think that's a bit much? Fifty-two percent. Well, now see, now Jerry, now see, Jerry, I disagree with that because rich people have to work hard. So you can get rich, you know, doing what you do, but the, the one, the trick to it is, is staying rich. And that takes a lot of hard work. And I, I mean, I think they need to be paying more taxes, but 52% I think is a bit ridiculous. Jerry, I'm glad you called. We will be back to continue this very stimulating conversation. The phone lines are open at 5201-KFI from Los Angeles and the Valley, 1-800-553-4640 from Orange County and across Southern California. When we come back, we got a guy on the line who says, Mother Love, you are way off course on this one. I hope it's a millionaire. So we can, he can explain to me so I can know what's really going on. I'd like to talk to you about it. The rich. Should they be taxed more if they make a million dollars, or is this uh, twenty percent? This three percent increase from twenty-eight percent to thirty-one percent is this going to break them? Should we feel sorry for them? We'll be back to take your calls and comments when we come from Ken Gallagher in the Camp by News Center. Some stories we're working on for the eleven o'clock news tonight. Uh, speaking of what we're going to do about the budget deficit, taxing the rich and such, the Democrat leaders uh, now say they hope to keep budget negotiations with the White House alive. Uh, Another deadline looms. The deficit reduction talks are in a crisis with Democrats ready to force a vote on a bill containing a controversial tax the rich plan that uh, Republicans oppose. <laughs> tax the, the rich plan. We have Republican House and Senate leaders met with President Bush for nearly, nearly two hours tonight. Uh, when that was over, as what you said, the meeting was inconclusive. A group of 14 Americans liberated from Iraq and occupied Kuwait is in Jordan. What are you doing, my love? I am. I always this is this is my topic notebook. This is one of my, one of many topic notebooks that has my topics and in my topic sheet and notes that I jot down. I always jot down notes from the from the show and how it's going. Um, whether it was an upbeat show. Um, so this job takes brains too. Yeah. <laughs> And then, too, I, you know, so I don't repeat a topic, or if I do repeat it, I can take it from a different angle, you know, because all talk show topics are always recycled, you know, I'm, you know, I mean, I've noticed that different talk shows tap my show, some of the big talk shows tap my show, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm, I'm very flattered about that, and, uh, so you have to, you know, take it from a different angle, or take a different approach with it, and so, and it's kind of, 
it's kind of hard for me because I don't do guests, you know, so I have to just, it all comes from my point of view. So, so far, so good. <laughs> so, so L.A. And, and the Valley has had 15 months of my point of view. So, you know, that's why I said I think people, you know, they know me. You know, I, I'm their girlfriend in the air chair. And this is what I do. I, 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 sit, I, I, sit, I sit in my air chair and I twirl around. <laughs> And I talk to Lou, and I talk to Bobby, and I talk to the people over at Coast, and we make faces at each other. <laughs> and my phone's ringing, we have a guitar. And this is what I do. And this is what I, this is what I do for money. <laughs> <laughs> they, they pay you for it too, huh? They pay me, and I get vacation time. I'm going to be on television in the morning. Should I tell them I'm going to be on TV in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> Dumb, qu dumb question. Can we get a sneak preview? Uh, no, Sorry, I didn't think so hard about that answer. Uh, what are we, I don't know. I, it's a topic show. I think it's uh, why do men cheat or how can you tell a man is cheating? What show is it going to be? On the Kelly and Gail show on NBC at 9 o'clock. Oh. Live on Channel 4 with Kelly and Gail and Mother Nell. <laughs> and so that'll be nice.